Hello and welcome to my channel. Today, I thought we'd go over the procedure or the procedure I use for setting your spindle bearing preload. Let's get into that. You know, since I did my taper roller bearings, I received a lot of comments and questions about uh, how you would go about setting your preload. Uh, I, people needed a little bit more information. I think I only showed about a minute and a half of the preload part in my uh, steel gears and taper roller bearing video. So uh, if you decided to change out your spindle bearings on your mini lathe, for either taper roller bearings or angular contact bearings, one of the things you're going to have to do is uh, reset your bearing preload. You might say, why would I need to do that? Well, if it's too tight, you're going to burn those bearings up. If they're too loose, you didn't achieve anything by changing your bearings. It's going to be, the spindle is going to be moving around. I have a lot of video footage from a previous video I did when I set my preload. And I thought we'd take a look at that. With the original bearings, they never set, you don't really need to set any preload on them. Put them in there, tighten it up, and you're good to go. As good as they can get with, uh, those bearings. What I'm getting at is to set a preload, you have to have those bearings. You need them to be able to move, move them to tighten up the spindle lot nuts and set the load. I noticed the people that were putting their bearings on, whether or uh, they were angular contact or taper roller bearings. They were literally pressing these bearings onto the spindle. You can't just press them on here. There's no way you could press them on on both sides of this housing and set a preload if they're both stuck in one place. I guess it'd be okay to have this one like that in one place. But the outer one has to be able to move so you can set a preload. So, after measuring all this and the IDs of these bearings, there's about, uh, there's about two tenths press fit, which isn't a lot, but uh, you need to polish this down until the bearings are just a slip fit. I'm going to polish this down a couple of tenths on my other lathe just so there is some movement. I want it size to size. And you'll see when we're uh, setting the preload why I did that. I thought I was going to start with quickly going over, putting the spindle in, starting to lock it up, and then remounting it and actually going through setting the preload. Let's get into that. Put the inner race on the spindle. All the way up against the shoulder. That was still snug. I could feel the drag on it. It wouldn't just fall on there. And you need it. You don't want to take too much off this spindle. Now, this is ready to go into the head.
That was not that easy. <laughs> but I, I could just imagine if that was a press fit in there. Okay, now it's the last tapered roller bearing. I need a rag. While we have some time here, I thought I'd ask everybody go get a rag. to like the video, subscribe for more videos, and click on the bell so you get all my videos set right to your inbox. That was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> the next thing is the spacer, this gear. Now, it's putting the jam nuts together. The right hand threads. And this is where you set your preload. What they tell you is that there should be no more than one to five thousandths worth of movement. Watch this. Not more than one to five thousandths. <laughs> I need to lock this up. Let's uh, lock this up and uh, get on with checking the preload. Let's do this. You know, the first thing you have to do is tighten up the first of these jam nuts. It pushes that gear on further, and it pushes the bearings together. It starts to set that preload. You know, all of this would be a lot easier if this head was bolted down. I'm going to bolt it down to the waist. So that it's not moving and I can put both my hands on it. I think that would be a lot easier. Let's go do that. There's different methods for uh, setting the preload. The method we're going to use is I have a 5 tenths readout indicator, test dial test indicator that we'll be using. And as we tighten it, the spindle up, tighten those bearings up. We'll check by moving it up and back until we get a oh, 1,000 to 5,000 of movement. I'm going to try to get it closer to 1,000. Let's do that. I bolted the head back onto the waist, onto the machine. And I have my indicator here. Here, take a closer look at this indicator. Indicator set on zero. When I push on the spindle, there's about 15 thousandths worth of uh, movement. I only want one to five thousandths. Let's start tightening this up. I'm gonna have to move this indicator. I have a bar here to hold this while I start tightening the jam nut. I have five six thousandths. It's got to be better than that. <clears throat> so, you know, if those bearings, the inner races, were pressed onto that, I could never adjust this preload. Okay, what I have here is two P2 
pieces of steel where I can leverage them and I have my spanner This is a half thousand indicator. I could maybe move it a half thousand. Okay, that was maybe five, six tenths. I'm gonna have to run this for a while and uh, have the bearings run in. And Let's get this head off of here and put in all those other internal gears. You know, I don't know if that helped anyone, but I, like I said, I got a lot of questions, uh, a lot of comments asking about exactly what I did and how I went through it. I had the uh, video footage. I hope this helped someone. So, I think this video is coming to an end, so until next time, enjoy.